Hi everyone, my name is Robin Speziali and I'm the national best-selling author of a book called Market Masters. In this video, I'll be talking about all the different um, sizes of companies in which you can invest in the stock market. And there's five main segments on, in the stock market and these segments are based on what's called market capitalization. And market capitalization um, is just a, a, an easy calculation you can make. And what you do, you take the stock price of any company trading on the exchange, and you take the stock price and you multiply it by the common shares outstanding. So let's say that you know a company is worth ten billion dollars. You would deem that company to be a large cap. If a company is worth three billion dollars, you deem it to be a mid cap. And if it's worth let's say 550 million, you deem it to be a small cap. So let's talk about these five segments and their different ranges. So a micro cap company would be any company now with a market capitalization uh, of upwards of $100 million in market cap. Small cap is a company that has a market capitalization of 100 million to 2 billion. A mid cap company would be any company with a market capitalization of 2 billion to 10 billion. A large cap is any company that has a market capitalization of 10 billion to 100 billion. And finally, a mega cap would be a company that sized 100 billion plus, anything over 100 billion dollars. And as retail investors, though, you know, it's important to look at, compare and contrast these different uh, segments of the market based on company sizes. Um, we have an advantage as do-it-yourself investors in the small cap space. Uh, more specifically, though, in my opinion, the micro cap, small cap, and mid cap space. Barry Schwartz, um, in my book, Market Masters, he explained that it's easier for retail investors to buy some smaller cap companies. The billion dollar or less stocks that a company like ours can't access anymore because we've gotten too big and would own too much of the stock." End quote. But while the small cap space is off limits for many large money managers, the mid cap space is not. Jason Donville, who runs a hedge fund here in Toronto, uh, Donville Kent Asset Management, he argued that in Canada, the mid cap segment is probably the most inefficient part of the market. In other words, there's money to be made in the mid cap space because there's not a lot of institutional ownership and or um, analyst coverage of these companies. And to recap, mid cap stocks are those that are sized between 2 billion and 10 billion in market cap. Personally, I like to invest more in mid cap companies than I do small cap. Um, but, you know, I also will invest in micro and small cap companies. Uh, the reason being is that because, you know, mid cap companies between 2 billion and 10 billion in market cap, they've established themselves. They've gone from good to great um, and they can just essentially replicate their strategy, you know, sell their proven product or service to uh, more markets worldwide. You know, whereas, whereas the small cap companies are less predictable. Um, they can go from, you know, some of them from good to nothing. Um, and in the micro cap space, very small companies that are under hundred million in market cap, you have to watch out for pump and dump scenarios as well. Um, that's why it's really important to understand, you know, risk reward and in investing. And, uh, you know, s s something that Warren Buffett has said, rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one and always consider the downside risk before you ever invest in a company um, to ever, you know, start thinking about what the upside risk could be. Think about how much money can you lose by investing in this stock. So Martin Ferguson said, and he's a, uh, he was a small cap manager here in uh, Canada. He ran the new Canada fund at Moyer. He said, I believe that there are opportunities in the small cap area that exceed those in the large cap area offset by higher risk. And Ferguson went on to explain, you know, Canada is essentially a small cap market. There are very few large cap companies in Canada. Whereas, you know, if you look in the U.S., there are a lot of large companies 
Um, you know, there's American companies that are uh, extremely well known. They're multinational, sell selling products and services all around the world. Now uh, you can find most of these companies in the S&P 500. S&P 500 um, is an index, but it makes up 80% of the entire um, U.S. stock market. Um, so Ferguson said that he looks at companies trading from 100 million in market cap all the way up to 1.5 billion in market cap. And there's approximately 400 of those small cap stocks in the Canadian market today, he says. However, uh, Martin Ferguson is the small cap king. So, you know, he can more readily pick winners within the small cap space. And I called him the small cap king because he had quite a phenomenal return. His uh, return since, since inception was uh, right around 15% compound annual growth. Um, but, uh, you know, one of his big focuses in picking these you know, great small cap winners, these uh, great stocks that went on to perform and, and beat the market, was uh, he looked at return on invested capital. And the first hurdle was that, you know, companies had to achieve a return on capital over their cost of capital. But then, you know, uh, even more so, their return on capital had to uh, be higher than their industry peers as well and higher than, or, you know, at, at, at a standard level uh, of all the companies that he held in his portfolio. And what I like to um, seek out are companies that have a uh, return on capital of 10% uh, or higher, at least. That, that's, that's really the lowest I'll go. I won't invest in any company that has a um, return on capital under 10%. <clears throat> and, you know, if, if you want, there's uh, another market master in my book, Kiki Delaney. You can uh, adopt her approach to allocating money to small caps. And what she would do, because there was this, you know, higher, higher risk, but a higher reward um, to control risk. Uh, she said that we invest initially no more than 1% in a small cap company. If it works, it's probably really going to work and it'll be very beneficial. But if it doesn't work, it will hurt the portfolio to the extent of its 1% exposure. So, you know, Kiki is saying that she um, dips her toes in some of these small cap companies and she will stay up to date on his quarterly performance, annual performance, and most likely will add more money as the, um, as the stock goes up um, on, on the back of, you know, real meaningful growth in the company. So, you know, this way you can limit your downside if you want to start investing in micro and small cap stocks. And I always advise people, of course, you know, do your own due diligence, but to start your portfolio with these, you know, bigger foundational companies. As for um, large caps and mega cap stocks, um, you shouldn't really expect, you know, much movement over time, you know, over five plus years. You, you might achieve, let's say, six to seven percent compound annual return, you know, considering the law of large numbers. Um, though, you know, these stocks can serve as natural hedges in your portfolio as they do tend to move with the market um, without as wide gyrations up and down as small cap and mid cap stocks often do experience. And, uh, you know, as, as some will agree, slow and steady wins the race. And, you know, it, it's great if you're achieving high compound annual returns, but, you know, so, so some investors uh, don't want you know, huge ranges of volatility in their portfolio. You know, if, they, you know, if achieving a 25% compound annual return over 10 years means, uh, you know, maybe one year uh, their portfolio drops 30%, but the other year it's up 60%. You know, sometimes that, uh, that isn't sustainable in the long run. That can be incredibly stressful if you have uh, too many large drawdowns such as this. Um, it's important to mention that while my classification of large and mega cap stocks, you know, as, as slower movers is true in the long run, because again, law of large numbers, it's hard for Amazon to go from 500 billion to a trillion to double because it's so big. Um, that might ne not necessarily be the case in certain market cycles. Okay. So, you know, looking at the four largest Canadian stocks in 2015, <clears throat> the analysis here is that one might be struck by their volatility and wide moves in the market, even though large cap stocks. Um, so here's a difference in those, between those um, stocks, 52 week highs and lows, RBC was 23% um, range, TD was 21%, Valiant 113% and Bank of Nova Scotia 34%. 
And so this just shows that, you know, some large cap stocks can experience very high volatility. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not uh, such sure bets. Uh, you know, when you call it a blue chip stock, um, you know, really all companies have a limited um, time span. If you look at Kodak, if you look at Research in Motion, um, you know, if you look at a lot of these, you know, once great big companies, um, you know, the, the growth doesn't last forever. So uh, what's important is that you understand these segments that we talked about. So micro, small, mid, large, and mega cap companies um, in which you can invest in and just, you know, understand the differences. So the smaller the company, uh, like a micro cap being under hundred million, the less institutional ownership of these shares and the less analyst coverage of these companies also. And that could lead to inefficiencies in the price of these stocks. And there could be advantages there for you. Um, usually the smaller the company though, uh, the greater the risk, uh, but also, you know, perhaps greater the reward. Then you, you start investing in larger companies. Um, these, because of the la large numbers, because so many institutions, you know, hold these stocks in their own portfolio, there's less volatility. These stocks are more liquid. There's more analyst coverage. There's more news about them always priced in to these larger stocks. And uh, I hope you, I hope you enjoyed this guys. If you have any more questions, uh, about different market cap companies and segments, you can email me at r.speziali at gmail.com or check out my website for uh, more write-ups on uh, in, in investing and my investment philosophy in general at robinspeziali.com. Thanks, guys. Talk soon.